Hello everyone. I've decided since I um, since I haven't really been releasing any videos for the past like six months, I will just release videos about my Android development since that's what I'm doing uh, recently. And I'm just going to basically be creating a project, and I'm going to record me creating a project, and hopefully, and I'm going to explain everything on the way, and hopefully, whoever is also in Android development will learn a lot from it. So anyway, let's forget about that and let's create a new Android project. Um, I'm gonna try and explain as much as I can, but we'll you'll see what happens. We're gonna name this. Um, let's see, what should we make? I've had a couple ideas kind of floating around in my head, and I'm also working full time on another project, so this is kind of like a secondary one. But I'm thinking some sort of video to GIF. I feel like that'd be a cool name. Or I mean a cool application to make. And let's target 2.2 since that is my version of my phone, since I have an OG droid. And uh, application name, pretty much just do the same thing. And then package name, and then min SDK version, we'll just set to 8. And we do want to create a uh, activity. Uh, let's do main activity. Hit finish, and this will create a little project for us over here. You want to open up the source folder, and open up this folder, and this code is generated for you. And what will happen is I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with this, but I'll just explain this. Uh, an activity is basically the running part, I guess you could say, of an Android application. And when you create an activity or when you like call an activity in Android, uh, it automatically starts out in this on create statement. Now there are things called activity life cycles, uh, which I guess I can show you. And this over here. This is basically the activity lifecycle of an Android application. Uh, you can uh, visit uh, this web page. I will probably explain it as I go along, but the most important thing is that when an activity starts, it calls on create, and when an activity stops, it calls on destroy. So let's get back to this. Um, so anyway, the super on create is basically you want you always want to include this when you're overriding the on create statement because it calls it's the super the, act, the super activities on create statement and it passes its bundle these are all things that I'll explain in good time but the most important thing is set content view and what that does is it basically sets the user interface for this activity and what you have to do is you have to specify a layout resource in this case it's main.xml and you access resources by doing this capital R and you can access things like drawables, which are basically pictures, strings, which are, you know, strings, and layouts, which are special layouts. So I can do r.layout. And then I can access my layouts right now. I only have main. So let's get rid of that. And set content view basically sets it to this. And I'll show you. So this is pretty much the view. Change this to Nexus 1. And what will happen is when we call this r.layout.main, it will set the view to this. And to show you how that works, I'm going to create another layout called main2. We want it to be a layout and stand in XML. Finish. So let's create it. Let's grab this, copy that, copy this over changes to something. This is layout 2. Save that. And let's go ahead and run this, I guess. Run it as an Android application. And this is going to open up the emulator. And I'm actually going to pause the video until this thing's up and running since the emulator often takes a long time to load. So let's go ahead and pause that. Alright, and we are back. And the emulator should be up and running. Okay, you see that it has created uh, let's actually just drag this over here. Uh, 
So as you can see, since we set the r.layout.main um, to this one, which says hello world main activity, it displayed that. But if we change it to this and then we rerun it, when this application runs again, it will display the other activity or the other resource. This is layout two. So that's basically how that works. And a really important thing that you should understand is this log cat thing. It's pretty much going to be your best friend. It will show everything that is happening in your debugger. Um, this is where you're going to be debugging a lot of errors that might pop up um, in your uh, program that you're going to make. So anyway, let's get rid of this main too. It's no longer needed, as I've already explained about that. And save that, exit of that. So next thing we're going to do is we want some buttons here because we want to be able to click things because my main goal is I want to be able to click something that will open up the video camera for us to take, uh, take a video. Since what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking that video, we're going to be conv converting it to a GIF format, which is basically like a picture that kind of looks like a video, but it's just a bunch of images one after the other. Um, kind of like a flipbook style. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. But we're just going to drag a couple buttons over here. Uh, two is fine, and obviously there's a lot uh, nicer ways to do styling and everything, but that's some more of an advanced thing. I'm trying to get the basics down right now, but let's change this ID to exit. Let's just change this ID to open camera, how about, and let's change this text to exit. Actually, I should probably tell you guys this first. Uh, when you're doing a text that you know is going to be static and not going to change, it's best to put it in the strings.xml file. And this is kind of an Android standard. It's If you use other programming languages, you notice that they have like constant strings and stuff like that, uh, that are static constant strings that never change. It's kind of similar to this. And this helps a lot if you ever plan on having your uh, program translated at all. Let me just check my time. And um, so it's always good to add strings you know are going to stay the same, like strings for uh, something like this for exit. I know it's something small, but it's always good to have. So we're going to add a string. Uh, its name is just going to be exit, and its value is going to be exit. This is how we're going to be able to identify the string, and this is the actual value that's going to show up. So now that we created that, again, you do add, and you pick a string. You can see there's also a bunch of different things we can do. And then now, we pop over to our uh, main.xml and we do at string slash exit and now it should show up with exit. Now you can do the same thing from any activities or any other uh, Java code you have. All you have to do is call the get string method which is built in. You need to pass it r.string.exit and say you can set this, set this to and this exit string will actually have the value exit. So you can do it both ways. Okay, and let's see, what's this? We want to give this at string. Nope. Oop, I made its text. It's what I wanted its ID to be. So at string uh, open camera. Or maybe take video. I feel like that's a better description of what we actually want to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Add string take take video uh, take video. All right, and we go back here. String take video. Good, good, good. Hopefully, oh wait, I did something wrong. Text equals add string take. Oh, oh, another thing. You always make sure to save your thing after you make an edit to it or else it won't take. There we go. Okay, now we have these buttons, and when we run this, do do see, make sure it shows up. So we have these buttons, we can click on them, but uh, nothing's happening, so we need to add some sort of uh, button listeners to it. So let's get rid of that, and let's create a method that we can put all of our uh, button listeners into, and basically what a button listener in is is when someone clicks on a button, we're, we'll be able to uh, execute some code when that happens. So let's go ahead and do this. Create a new method. 
Oh boy, what am I doing? Okay, and this uh, is going to show you another really important feature about uh, Java, or about Android, is about how you are able to access things like this from the code. How you're able to access your views. All of these things are called views. That's basically uh, the same thing as like a control in C sharp, and um, it basically is the standard user interface object, I guess you could say. So, um, learning that, what we have to do is say we want to retrieve exit button. So we do button exit button equals find view by ID. And this is another built in thing similar to find string where we can pass it uh, the ID of the button and it will return that. Make sure to import the button and it will return a button object so we have to make sure to cast it to a button. <coughs> Excuse me. So now after we have this button object we can do things like set text and set other things and but what we really want to do is we want to add or set on click listener and what this does is it'll set a listener for uh, when we click the button so we can execute code and there's a couple different ways you can do this you can do new on click listener and just we're just gonna give it blank and then we're gonna mouse over and we have to import it first at implemented methods and this is kind of an inline way of doing it what will happen is whenever someone clicks this exit button anything in here in this on click method will be um, executed so that's one way to do it another way to do it is you do set on click listener this and this is the way I actually do it because I, I prefer it the most and what happens is you go all the way down here and you let this activity implement on click listener so that there's going to be an on click method in this main activity and what you can do is here is you can have several buttons all set its on click listener to this which is the activity and in here all you have to do is you have to do switch v dot get id now if, if you don't know what a switch statement is you can just look it up but it basically iterates through the different choices in the case statements and what we do is case r dot e dot exit now whenever we click something it'll execute everything in here because the id of what we clicked is exit so we're gonna have another one called take video same thing just gonna add break statements in there for now and a third way you can actually do it is another actually preferred way if um, you create your own uh, on click listener object make sure to add the on click method and then you can do pass it to your set on click listener and now whenever someone clicks the button all the code in here will be executed and that's another way you can do it. I'm just going to exit, kill that, and I'm also going to kill this. And I'm just going to set this back to this. So to show you, I guess, that it works, um, when we click exit, we're going to change the text of it, text of that view, to this has been clicked, I guess. Kind of pointless. Or you can just exit. How about that? Do what it's actually meant to do. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run that. So if, it, if this does what we want, it'll just close the application. Boom, close the application. Okay, so we also want to do this video one. So we can just do this in an easier way. Basically what I did is I did everything, but I just didn't create this button object. I just did it all. I don't know whatever but um, now for this this is going to be a little bit more complicated and we're gonna cover it in the next video since I think I'm running a little bit over yep 15 minutes alright so I'll see you guys next time this is Quackworks signing out